In our previous video, we saw how to make a network connection from our microservices application and get a string of raw data back. In this video, we're going to see how to parse that string into a series of Java objects. So the first thing that we need to do is say string uh, raw JSON, for example. So this is simply the raw data that we're getting back from our JSON service. We need to bring in a library to help us parse out our JSON with a couple of objects called JSON object and JSON array. So the library is the library that contains this org.json.json object. I just did a quick search for it and came up to this Maven dependency. So I can copy this dependency, run back to my project and look for the POM XML file. And I simply need to add this dependency down in the dependencies section. So there we go. And then tab it away and we'll tidy up just a little bit and save. And then we can do a Maven update or it might actually automatically do that for us. And we'll one moment, Maven, and update project. And this will go grab any libraries that we require. For example, our uh, the, uh, the JSON file that I just spoke about. So I'm going to go back now to my plant DAO and just recall that this plant DAO is going into kind of a low level network and saying, give me back whatever you find at this URL. And it saves that into the string called raw JSON. Let's take a look at what that string is going to look like. Roughly, it's going to look like so. So you see, we're going to start with curly plants and then colon and then open square bracket. And then you see a bunch of repeating information. So that's really important because we realize that the first line is a little different from the lines that follow. So I'll, uh, I'll select this entire unit. Whoops, control A, there we go, control C. And then I'm going to go to JSON viewer dot stack dot HU. This is a really nice way to take some raw JSON and then have a way to visualize it. So paste, whoops, uh, paste down in the bottom rather, paste here, and then go to viewer. And what you see is that we're starting with an array called plants. And inside of that array called plants, we have a series of different plant objects. And if we look at these plant objects, you'll see an ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. Uh, the name will be the same, the value may be different. So you see this one is a desert oak, this one is a smoke tree or smoke bush. And if we keep going on down, you'll notice that all of them have the same attributes, but the attributes have a different value. So in JSON, essentially, the curlies mean an object, the square bracket indicates an array of some type. With that knowledge, let's go back and let's take a look at our JSON parse here. So we're grabbing all of the raw JSON into one string. And then what we're going to do is parse it out into a series of plants. So let's start by just putting it all into one JSON object. So I'm going to say JSON object, just a moment, root equals new JSON object and then raw JSON. This is putting that entire unit of text into this JSON object. Now we simply click and say import JSON object. And there we go. Looking pretty good. Next thing that we need to do is we need to grab the array out of this raw data. So give ourselves a bit of space here. And we'll say uh, root dot get JSON array. And we need to pass in the name of our JSON array. Now, what's the name of our JSON array? Well, remember, if we take a look up here, we kind of have this root object called JSON. And then we have the array identified with the square brackets. And that array name is plants. So we simply pass in the word plants like so. Make sure it matches exactly what that array is. And this will return to us a JSON array. So JSON array plants equals root dot get JSON array plants. Uh, once again, we'll need to simply click and uh, import JSON array just like so. And now we have something that we can iterate over and we can start to populate this list of all plants that we've identified on line number 23. So I'll use an old school for loop. We'll say for int i equals zero and then i less than plants dot length and then i plus plus. So simply shake hands with everything in this plants array. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll say plants dot get json object and we use that i indicator to tell it which object to get we'll save that into a json object 
JSON object, rather, there we go, name JSON plant. Okay, so if we kind of visualize this a little bit, we started with the root up here. We went to the array down here, that's our JSON array. Now we're shaking hands with every single one of these items that we see here. Now, what we can do is we can create a new plant object, a plant DTO. Remember what the plant DTO is. That's something that we made a little while back in our DTO package, and it's a noun that essentially describes a plant. So it has GUID, genus, species, cultivar, and common, like so. And we can populate these from our DAO. So let's go back to our DAO, and let's make a new plant DTO object. Plant DTO. Plant equals new plant DTO. Now be very careful here. JSON plant on line 32 is the JSON data that we got back from our service. Where this plant DTO is a plant object that we will populate from JSON data. So what we can do now is we can say JSON plant dot get string. Actually, let's start with get int. And let's see, ID, and we'll put ID in quotes and terminate with a semicolon, and let's see what that is. So ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. To a JSON object, we need to pass in each of these names, and it will return the value to us that corresponds to that name. So JSON plant dot get ID, JSON plant dot get string, and then we'll say genus. And I'll tidy these up, I'll, I'll, I'll get the data now, I'll tidy them up in just a minute. JSON plant dot get string species whoops and then JSON plant dot get string cultivar JSON plant dot get string and we'll finally say common. Okay, just so we can visualize this pretty well, let's save these all into local variables. So we'll say int GUID equals JSON plant dot get uh, ID, string genus equals JSON plant dot get genus, string species equals JSON plant dot get species, string cultivar, JSON plant dot get cultivar, string common equals JSON plant dot get string common. Now that you see those all kind of pulled out of the JSON, we can begin to populate our DTO with this information. So now we can say plant dot set GUID. And guess what? GUID. There we go. Uh, this will be pretty straightforward. Plant dot set genus and genus plant dot set common. And whoops, and let's go ahead and put common in there. Terminate with the semicolon. Plant dot set cultivar, and I realize I did that a little bit out of order, but it doesn't really matter. And fill in with cultivar. Plant dot set uh, species, and we'll fill that in with species. And I realize also that get up here should be set. Now do the one thing that I always forget to do, which is add the populated plant to our collection. Okay, so now we'll say, uh, what was the name of our collection we created above? All plants. So we'll say all plants dot add, and then we'll say plant. So in this DAO method, what we've done is we've pulled in a string of raw JSON. We've parsed it out to find the array of plants. And then from that array of plants, we're shaking hands with each plant, creating a brand new plant object, adding that to our collection, and then returning the entire plant collection. Now let's take a look in the debugger and see if this works. So what I did is I simply refreshed our page over in the browser. I refreshed our endpoint. I restarted in the debugger as well. And now we're walking into our search plants. So I'll F6 and then we're at the controller. So this is essentially handling the endpoint. Now I'm going to step into, just one moment. Okay, uh, now we will there we go. We will step into this line where we're looking at our specimen service and we press F5. We didn't do a whole lot of new work here, so let's go ahead and F5 one more time and go into our DAO. Now here's our DAO. We saw this previous line work in a previous video where we're going out and we're getting raw data. And just to confirm, if I mouse over raw JSON, you should see what looks like some familiar raw JSON data that we've seen before. 
Now we create our initial JSON object out of this. From that initial JSON object, we ask for the very first thing, which is the array of plants. And again, looking at the JSON, you see the name plants in quotes, followed by a colon and then a square bracket, which indicates that this is essentially array data. So we choose F6. And now what we're doing is we're parsing the very first plant and we're getting out the genus, species, cultivar, and common. So Allocazarena, I'm, I'm totally botched that name, I know. Let's look at the common name. That might be a little bit easier. So common name of desert oak. Let's go back and take a look at our JSON stream and what was the first oak that we saw. Scroll up a little bit and sure enough, it's desert oak. So you see that we're pulling this desert oak out and we are parsing it into a true Java object. So we'll simply F6 over this and we add that to our collection and then we move on to the next. I'll go through this a bit more quickly and through the next and through the next and so on and so forth. I'll go ahead and put my breakpoint or put my cursor on the return all plants and then we'll run to line and we'll see what we get. So once I'm on all plants, I mouse over and let's see if we can scroll this up a little bit. Oh, there we go. And if you take a look at this, this array list now has a collection of plants. You can see we have plant DTO. I'll pick a few at random. You see here Schumard Oak and here's English Oak. And here's Laurel Leaved Oak. Now what's important here is this isn't just a string. It's literally a series of populated plant DTO objects, which know these attributes of a plant, the genus, species, cultivar, and common. In other words, at this point, it's speaking native Java language to us. So we can use this to do a lot of things. We can use it to populate our front end page. Uh, we can use it to persist something in the database or so on and so forth. So I F6 and we see that this comes back to our service. Our service returns it back to our controller. If I take a look at the controller, I might need to F6 one more line, which unfortunately is gonna take it out of scope. But nonetheless, we now have the data all the way back to our controller, and therefore now it's data that we can show on our screen. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.